Hello friends. So let's discuss the essay topic. Poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. So this statement was uh, said by Shelley, and Shelley was a very famous poet of nineteenth century. He belonged to Romantic era. But who Shelley was, that is not important as of now. We will interpret this topic and understand this topic, assuming that you don't have much knowledge of English literature. and with the help of some common day or common sense examples or uh, some examples which i have repeatedly told my students in my test series on, or on my youtube channel which are around 5 6 of those things with the help of those things only i would address this as a topic so let's quickly jump to this poets are the and acknowledge legislators of the world so let me share my screen here poets are the and acknowledge legislators of the world so what this as a topic means uh unacknowledged legislators of the world so legislators are someone who make rules and those rules those norms they govern the society so here uh, the argument is the topic is that poets are also people who have such profound influence on the society that they impact the thought process of the society the conscience of the society what the society considers as right or wrong what the society considers as worthy to emulate or certain principles which the society sets up in front of it, it itself these are those things which are influenced by poets a lot so this is the meaning and introduction of the topic that this essay highlights the importance of poets and their work and the central role they play in guiding the humanity towards the right path and to help mankind rise above its weakness and obstacles we will come to this shortly but quite often they are not acknowledged for this great role this is a very simple statement and now we will take up some examples of, of some very famous poems uh, some very famous poems which have influenced us now you might say sir i don't know poems but i will tell you that you know a lot of poems you know a lot of songs which are already there in your work uh, in your vocabulary every person knows them and you could have used them for example jan ganman that's a national anthem that's a poem that's a song basically that's a piece of poetry which we will call which was written by tagore so there are many such things which you could have used in this essay okay so now let's come here uh, these are the kind of examples you could have used vande matram sar faroshi ki tamanna jan ganman now vande matram is a song which has such profound influence that people could literally uh, take bullets on their chest listening to this song this was the war cry of our freedom struggle similarly sar faroshi ki tamanna ab hamare dil mein hai dekhna hai zor kitna bazu e qatil mein ram prasad bismal wrote these lines bhagat singh and other freedom fighters and revolutionaries they made these lines very popular and when bhagat singh threw the bombs in the central legislative assembly chanting slogans of inqilab zindabad that was again a poetic phrase and lines like these then these shook the entire foundation of british empire such is the impact of poetry on us they can create and they can chart out new trajectory for the history of human civil civilizations or human humanity jan ganman is a sacred totem for us it represents our our nationality it represents our nationhood do you see nation otherwise what is a nation a nation comes to us through these poems so with these examples you can talk about the profound influence and the extent to which these poets they impact us and they impact the society next we can talk take uh, take up some examples of uh, poems uh, from cinema and popular songs many such songs come to my mind i am a movie bluff and especially i really love songs of those era 1960s and 70s but like two examples here naya daur naya daur had a few lines chhodo kal ki baatein kal ki baat purani naye daur mein likhenge hum milkar naye kahani this is a line i had shared with my test my test series also with students and these lines re represent the ethos of a nation which wants to break the shackles of slavery and colonialism and wants to look forward to the new to the world with a new approach do you don't you think that this is similar to the vision of prime minister modi which he is saying 75 years later that azadi ka amrit kal we will break the rules of slavery 
So what legislators do, what the prime ministers or kings or queens or presidents or governors or chief ministers or all those peoples do, basically that is already preceded in some form by some poet. And similarly, Kal, Kar Chale Hum Fida, Janotan Satiyo, a song which was uh, sang by Lata Mangeshkar um, in the backdrop of Indo-China War of 1962. Uh, and, uh, and that song, Pradeep, uh, I think Pradeep wrote the lyrics, they, was, they had so profound influence that, they, uh, that even today we hear them. So... Legislators may ask us to respect the nation or do this and that, this ritual with respect to the nation, but it's ultimately the poetry which penetrates our heart and soul, which influences our mind in a great way. Next point which we can take up is that poets can see the crisis before humanity. Now, whatever the crisis before humanity are, there are many crises. It is the poets who can see them. An example which I'm quoting here is of Matthew Arnold, Dover's Beach. This is a poem which I had discussed just a few weeks ago on my YouTube channel. And I told you, please see this. It will give you many further points for essay. The link I will share for this poem again. So in this poem, in this channel discussion also I had made that uh, clear that how Matthew Arnold wants to show that humanity is facing a crisis because it is caught between science, rationality on the one side and emotions, feeling on the other side. And in this mechanical world, we are depriving ourselves of feelings, of faith, of emotions. So this crisis before the modernity uh, was seen by the poets and they transmitted their poetical thoughts. You know, this poem was written as early as in around, around 1850s, this poem was written. And if you listen to this poem, you will find it very relevant. You will feel as if the writer is talking about something taking, taking place in 2022. In fact, the same central thought, science versus emotion, it is being used in another essay today. The essay which was there on this topic, uh, history is a series of victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man. So this conflicts between romance and science, between emotions and between rationality was a theme which was already reflected in this topic, in this poem that I had discussed. Similarly, a lot of poets, they talked uh, about the ritualities of world war and they helped mobilize public opinion. So the next point which I have to say here is that poets mobilize public opinion, whether it's against the climate change, whether it's against the world war, whether it is against the Ukraine and Russia war or any such thing. It is the poets. Bob Dylan, who was a, he got Nobel Prize. The answer is blowing in the wind, something like that he wrote way back in 1960s or 70s. And that is, you, if you listen to the songs which have been written against the wars, against international conflicts like that, you will feel uh, as if they, they, these poets have profound uh, insights and they are, and these songs, they will influence the public opinion. So who, whose job is it to mobilize the public opinion? It is a legislator's job. But if we look into the reality, we will find it is the poets through their songs, they are mobilizing the public opinion. Then one example of how uh, these poets, they influence and their poems influence our thought process is the example of religious scriptures. Religious scriptures. Whichever religion you may talk about. Every religion. Sikhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam. All religions, they have some scriptures, some hymns, or some lines which are recited in a particular way. And they come to us in a form of poetry. And, you know, don't you think that these poetries influence us? Ramayana and Mahabharata, what were they? Even they were work of poetry. So what Valmiki or Vedvyas wrote thousands of years ago, or what Tulsi Das Ji wrote, uh, say around uh, 500 years ago, they are still impacting us today. Our thought processes, what we considered as holy, what we considered as a sin. And uh, similarly, in Western uh, world, we were John Dern and uh, Spencer. They wrote poems glorifying their religious faiths. So what the poets write, that does not just stays on the paper, that comes to us. And we in start imbibing them 
So the rules with a poet draft on their paper, we start enacting them to the core of our hearts. In fact, see, there, is, there are some words in, in religious scriptures across all religions, in whether Latin or Sanskrit or Tamil. The, you, you will hear these words, you may not even know the meaning, but the phonemes which are there in, this, in those words, they will, you will start feeling certain energy when you listen to the songs, those uh, words. Like if I say, Om Ya Atma Da Balda Yase Vishwu Pasate Yase Prasisham Deva Yase Chayam Ritam Yase Mritu Kasmai Deva Yaha Visha Vidhim. You may not know the meaning of these words, but still the way the individual phonemes and letters and sounds are arranged, they have a magical effect on us. So that is the power of a poet. That power, it transcends the power of legislators also. Because you may forget what the le rules legislators made. You may forget the names of legislators. You may Even their entire uh, forms of government may be abolished someday. The buildings may be demolished someday. But what these great poets wrote thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, it still influences us to such deep levels. It gives directions to the society. It tells the society what is right, what is wrong, how the society should interact with each other, during a marriage ceremony, there are certain hymns being uh, or some recited. So, so the, on those hymns, we get to know what are the duties of the husband, what are the duties of a wife. So the way the husband and wife have to interact with each other, that is spelled out not only by the, the law, the Hindu marriage act or some other marriages acts. No, that is being spelled out by, by these by these poetical these these uh, poet uh, these poetries by these hymns. So that is a profound influence these poets have on us. Next point which we have here is that poets rise above their personal attachment. You can very well understand this thing. These are the qualities now which we are ascribing to poets. See, we common people cannot look beyond ourselves. I cannot look beyond or you cannot look beyond your interests or your family's interests at the maximum. But these poets, they rise above their personal, personal uh, attachments and they grow up and they start talking about the entire race or the entire humanity. So that's a great quality they have. That's a quality which a legislator should have because he should ought to represent not just one or two or three people, not just a few people inside his family, but he ought to represent a wide segment of the population. And that is what poets are also do doing. And if I extend this point further and see my friends, now I may be saying certain things which Shelley may not have said. But as and but as I said, it's it's you. It's not your job to go back and dig into the grave of Shelley and what Shelley wrote, and what Shelley meant by that statement. But we have to take that statement, and I am going to interpret it. I am interpreting it in the light of some current contemporary issues, and also certain things which you can write in your essays to make it look an essay which has been written by a UPSC aspirant and not a like say an English literature student only. Okay, so what I was telling you that they give voice to voiceless women, Dalits, Blacks, tribals. There are Sylvia Plath, she was a feminist writer in America. Kamala Das, she was a feminist writer in India. They gave voices to women, Dalit writers, Black writers. I've discussed about Black writers, Langston Hooks. I've shared two poems, I've discussed two poems on my channel, go through them. In those poems, he, he talks that how Hank Langston Huggs uh, talks about that how he is a uh, he is a brother in, in a family, but still, uh, just because of his skin color, he is being asked to go in the kitchen to eat when the guests arrive. So they talk about tribals and all the marginalized people, people who don't have voices, and not just individual communities. Poets talk about poets talk about larger humanity also. There are certain things which the home humanity wants to express, but it does not find words. And that is the poet which gives them the words. So the poets give, gives them the voices. Isn't that the like something they are transcending or they are doing the work of legislators also? It is the legislators who should be speaking for us. But in reality, it is the poets who are speaking for us. And quite interestingly, in fact, even if you look into some budget debates or other debates, we'll often find legislators seeking recourse to some poetical, some poetry to justify their policies. Manmohan Singh Ji did that very famously. Modi Ji, Jaitli, all do that. Okay, now we come to the next point. Poetry, it leads to political mobilization. 
poetry it influences uh, uh, political mobilization in a very big manner like dalit rights movement if you talk about black rights movements if you talk about they have been very significantly impacted by the rise of uh, certain movements in arts uh, especially in poetry i was talking about this black rights movement so there was this harlem renaissance i have discussed this thing in that video on those two points i'm not going beyond those things i'm only talking about those examples which i have already discussed on my channel and they are not there isn't there are not too many you can at least watch them next is poetry is an imitation of life because what happens in life if we get to see that in poetry and it's vice versa what happens in poetry it gets impacted in the life and here i had a uh, this cursed an essay on these lines and see friends whatever examples i have told you there there was this essay topic which i had given to my students and this is the script for that i discussed all these examples there also if you see here uh, sir farooshi ki tamanna uh, this and uh, and bharat mata uh, painting that's painting vande matram war cry these examples rigvedas and geeta and they are all work of poetry and langston hughes po poets like langston hughes and walt whitman their their ideas i discussed them they, their names and i repeat their names quite often poem wasteland i talk a lot about that i repeat these four five names time and again in front of you in front of my students so that they can grab these ideas and make them a part of them see as i said uh, i belong to this world of english literature and i have studied this discipline for a long time and it's not possible for me to teach you for 5 years definitely so what i want to do is that all these things see all these things which we study this topic was very was anticipate i was anticipating a topic on art i was anticipating a topic on poems very categorically i had told the students that you may get a topic on art or poem or something like culture and in that use these examples of poems most of the things which i which i have told you to now and i am going to discuss in, a, in the next few minutes i had told the students repeatedly because i was expecting it and i am so happy this for this that the topics the topics which i discuss or i put in my test series they get repeated and it's a great feat because i don't give 64 topics to my students or 70 80 topics i give them only 10 12 topics divided in six tests each test having not eight but only two tests two two topics so that students can revise and from within those 12 topics if four five topics are coming in the test series then i think it's a great feat it's a great achievement for me so as i was telling you these these people like shelley these people like romantic poetry or the english literature we i keep read we, i keep reading them as as a, as a person of who belongs to this discipline of english literature or as a person who has qualified ugc net a uh, couple of times with a very high percentage but the what i do try to do is get the nectar of those things and transmit to you those things i was really expecting a topic on this theme poetry and in my essay test series i had uh, discussed with students and i had explained them uh, this uh, that you can get this topic and what topic can you can get uh, i had told them about this line that humanity will seek refuge in poetry remember this this these are some notes which i had discussed with a student art cinema art and matthew andel said these lines in this time humanity will seek refuge in poetry remember this line so this this the topic of today that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world is also similar to the topic humanity will seek refuge in poetry both of them basically signify the importance of poetry in our lives and how they impact us and in fact this is the statement i will be using i can be using as a conclusion for uh, or in the way forward towards the end of this poem so uh, the entire experience which i had gained uh, by being in this discipline of english literature for like 4 5 years maybe more i the nectar of that the essence of that i try to put in like six eight topics or 12 topics and then transmit to you okay now let's get back to the topic enough of self uh, uh, self uh, admiration so the next is see in a topic uh, on poetry or in any any subject specific topic do not 
indulge only with respect to the topic but talk about things which are concerned with the society at large also so we will talk about certain issues and problems with respect to the poets and poetries of today also keeping that word and acknowledged legislators of the world in the in the mind so one problem is vulgarity in the art this we will agree that we are really moving into a lot of vulgarity these days too much of vulgarity is there uh words like chikni chameli that is the kind of songs which we get to hear anti police bula legi that kind of lyrics we have so that's compare this with the songs which i was telling you naya daur chodo kal ki baatein kal ki baat purani naye daur mein likhenge humne ilkar nayi kahani hum hindustani and so on so those songs which we used to sing or those poetry which we used to sing in during freedom struggle or after independence compare them with the kind of these vulgar lyrics Uh, which we get to hear today i don't even i can't even utter those le- uh, words here but the point is that vulgarity has crept inside art it has crept inside art the next point here is ideology ideology has also crept inside art and this see ideology is a wrong, bad thing because poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world but poets should not become political like legislators poets should not be talking about politics should they should be it's a controversial thing actually but it's a controversial thing quite actually some people say that okay poets should be talking about po- uh, political concerns also but the point which i want to draw here is that sometimes it is uh, it is not uh, visible and invisible way in covert ways poets they promote certain ideologies they may claim to be neutral but in practice they sometimes harbor political ambitions or for the sake of some political patronage some patronage from some political party or some government or some opposition or something like that they try to promote a particular political belief in their work and thus they are not true there true to their conscience so for an example if i give you don't write these examples just for understand so we have, we have a lot of these awards ceremonies uh, sahitya award in our, at the national level or nobel prize in literature at the nas- international level or there are many such award systems which but the but through these award systems also they are used to patronize certain kind of poets poets who are speaking of a particular ideology so they are promoting certain ideologies some poets would be talking against socialism they would be certain who would be talking uh, against uh, or in the favor of uh, feminism or against or in the favor of say capitalism or things like that or the the idea is they will not be true to their conscience they will be doing this for some gain that could be either monetary gain or that could be either political gain the next point here is the way capitalism market and money have really made these things very bad and dirty pop music this is similar to the idea of vulgarity in art which you are talking about that today the poets they are not writing to raise the conscience of the civilization they are not writing like sarfurushi ki tamanna singing which people can make even supreme sacrifices they are writing shitty lyrics i don't want to utter those lyrics you can think of them these lyrics which are misogynist at times sometimes they are casteist sometimes they they uh, objectify uh, humans especially women so these kind of things which are result from pop music <clears throat> that is the poets of today they are caught <clears throat> in the greed for money either because of compulsions or because of force next point here is we have enough criticize our everyone but what about ourselves do we care for our poets now let us look into this topic this idea do we care for our poets poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world unacknowledged we have, we have left them orphaned we have left them in disdain isolated when there is a see when there is a uh, when there is a poetry uh, performance or poets in your town do you go to listen them do you want now now where is the crowd moving the crowd is watching those tantalizing those sensationalizing stuff medias and you know, so, social media instagram and those kind of things but who has got time to watch good kind of poetry so if we are not going to patronize and we are not going to support the good poets then how would they come forward 
we have been very brutal we have been very selfish as a society and we have provided we have, we have not provided the space to the poets which they deserve so we have killed the paldo palka shayar i was talking about this paldo palka shayar just a week ago in one of the solution videos on a different topic in which i had mentioned this song and talked about sahir lodihani so that that uh, poet who was to be there for one or two seconds we have killed him because we have withdrawn our support because we are busy with other uh, pursuits in our life the second thing we need to remember here, here is that poets are not manufactured in factories poets are not manufactured in factories you can manufacture iphones maybe you can manufacture all those all these phones and other stuff <clears throat> cars and automobiles but <clears throat> poets are not manufactured in factories and how do poets take birth what it requires to create a poet i leave it to, to you but the most important thing is it needs nurturing it needs constant support because poets are extremely sensitive they are emotional they are creative and they need the support they need our support in different ways so next time when a child in a family he starts writing about poetry we should not make fun of him we should not discourage him we should not force him to take up uh, science or mathematics things like that so from there to the lyrics writer whose name you do not know in the songs which you are watching so people we know people these days when they make uh, some so, some cover songs it's very popular now what is now see in on instagram if you see people make reels when they make reels do they ever remember who wrote those words or when they make cover songs do anyone does anyone remember the lyrics writer people may remember at the max the hero and the heroine they are glamorized actors and actresses maybe sometimes uh, the singers is also remembered and acknowledged arjit singh lata mangeshkar sunidhi chauhan so on sometimes musician but hardly anyone knows about the lyrics writer of the song who wrote the lyrics nobody knows that people who are really very concerned who have a special taste for that only they may give focus to that but the lyrics writer and the poet neither we, we we have what we have done we have deprived him of money you see in bollywood bollywood or cinemas poets don't get any money they have no other forms of uh, remuneration also next what we have done is we have deprived them of fame also we have deprived them of the time that is we are not spending our time on them and we are not even bothered to understand them today poets write shitty stuff not because they are dumb but because people have no time to interpret their words so think on these lines so are we supporting those unacknowledged legislators they are legislators they are those who will show path to the humanity see uh, so on these lines uh, we could conclude we are moving towards the conclusion here humanity will seek refuge in poetry that was a line matthew anel said and as i said i have told this line again and again this year i told this line personally to every student i send the sent lines like these and other lines also i sent on whatsapp i used to send on phone i used to tell every student i tell i used to say that use these lines in way forward or some other way remember these lines and this line i'm using here for way forward or we can also talk about uh, as i said uh, i was telling you the importance we should we should give to poets and or tagore's ideas where the mind is without fear and things like that the, the, the poets are those who are breaking the narrow domestic walls in front of us somewhere in the essay if you want you can also talk about the legislators what the legislators in the world are doing today and what the poets in the world are today, doing today legislators may have forgotten their roles it's the poets who are filling the space ukraine and russia they are fighting with each other their legislators or their rulers somehow they are not able to bring peace nato and all these organizations military organizations they are not able to bring peace it's the poets who are striving for peace just uh, yesterday i had shared on youtube channel uh, these lines uh, by uh, these lines i will uh, these lines uh, written by wh orton i had given these lines to students also as part of a topic and ask them to remember if they could but the idea is even if you don't remember but the idea is see in such these poetical these poetries they are talking about in the nightmare of dark all the dogs of the europe bark and the living nations wait each sequestered in its hate 
This poet W. H. Auden is writing these lines in 1939. That is the time he is writing these lines. So way back, even before the World War actually started, he wrote these lines in January 1939. But it looks like these lines are written for today, 19 sorry 2022. It is the poets, it's the songwriters, it's the it's these people who are trying to bring peace to a world which is ravaged by war, conflict, and crisis. And it is they who are stepping into the roles of legislators, trying to show humanity the path which it should proceed. It is these poets when we fall uh, in depression or in negativity. It is these poets who inspire us. When after seventy-five years of freedom, we still are not able to fulfill the dreams of our freedom fighters. It is the songs which they sang, those freedom fighters, which inspired us today. When we hear one day matram, when we hear sir Farooq ki tamanna, or when we hear. छोड़ो कल की बातें कल की बात पुरानी नए दौर में लिखेंगे हम मिलकर नई कहानी वेन वी हियर दिस काइंड ऑफ सॉन्ग्स वी आर मोटिवेटेड वेन पोइट्स राइट गुड न्यू गुड सॉन्ग्स लाइक दोज ऑफ लक्ष्य मूवी देन यंगस्टर्स गो एंड ज्वाइन आर मीन्स दैट इज द इम्पैक्ट पोइट्स है पोइट्स कैन ट्रांसफॉर्म अवर आर लाइफ लॉट सो दिस इज इट सी सो दिस इज इट हाउ यू कैड एट इट सी माई सेल्फ अ पोइट आई माई सेल्फ डू ए लॉट ऑफ पोइट्री and on youtube i keep bringing some videos with respect to poetry of some great writers i've been doing this for the last couple of years and some students may find it weird some people may find it weird ki sma why are you discussing these things but this was why i had been discussing because i knew this had to happen one day and even if not just for this topic but for a range of other topics you will find these ideas extremely helpful and relevant so with this i will end it here and um, thank you i hope that you got this idea and i as i was telling you that that sometimes i also i feel discouraged when i when i discuss a long poem and some students they really take interest but others have this mindset ki yaar ye poem hum kyun padhe ye upsc ke liye poem kyun padhe but once in a month or once in two months if i share a poem on poem you can go through that it will help you the ideas will increase your artistic ability also and it will actually really ha- help you write good essays okay friends so with this i will end it end it here i hope this was beneficial to you and if you want to take uh, or the right more benefit you can join the essay program where i will be teaching you how to write essays so with this thank you all